Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to this week's Mixed Media Tutorial with me Lisa Taggart. This one's called Ice Song and today's project we're going to have a look at how to create reflections, stamping techniques to recede background images when creating a scene and blending mixed media materials. So if you're interested in that, let's first of all look at the materials we're using today. First of all, we're using Multifarious Smooth Card. It's a great mixed media card. We're also using the medium size circle template from the Acetate template set. We've got elements in Delum Blue, Dark Denim, Russet Orange and Sundance. Also uh, Versafine Claire and Nocturne for the stamping. I've got some Pan Pastels in Ultramarine Blue Extra Dark, Titanium White, ultramarine blue uh, tint and finally turquoise but uh, use uh, blues and whites whatever you have also applicators for the pastels and masking fluid and a brush for the fluid I'm using my stencil brushes uh, to coordinate with the colors of ink I'm also using a couple of uh, pastel pencils a dark and a gray an ordinary pencil and a white gel pen for the stamps, uh, there's not too many this week, but we have a couple of trees, red pine small, small pine trees, I've selected one of those, Falco and Maca. So if you want to convert all of that into something that looks a little like this, just keep on watching. It's quite a large uh, picture today. We've got 11 by 6 inches, a piece of card. And I'm taking my circle template and first of all we're going to draw in the moon uh, and the top right hand side so in the top third of the card. Next we're going to roughly draw our areas of ice or snow so there's a ridge there at the start for one of the uh, wolves to stand uh, there's a second one at the side and then this little skinny one uh, around the halfway mark on the card. Something like that. Next we're going to take our masking fluid and we're going to fill all of those areas in. Now the moon, I'm only, go only going to uh, fill in two thirds of it because I want to blend the rest with the sky. And it's just a question of filling the other areas in and then leave to dry. So once it's dry, uh, we're going to take our ink pads and a couple of stencil brushes and uh, to the uh, top of the uh, ridge on the left hand side, we're going to add yellow in the centre of the page. We're going to concentrate that in the middle but we're also going to blend it out either side and as you'll see in a little minute we're also going to blend some below that um, imaginary horizon line so I'm doing that now just extending it down now the thing about the ink um, we're blending with our stencil brushes and uh, to get the effect I'm really uh, using circular motions with the brush and it looks a bit rough at this stage it's not a perfect blending but uh, we're, we're going to fix that later with the pan pastels so it's really just to get the colour in at this stage as you can see I've moved on to the russet orange and I'm concentrating that orange um, both above and below the imaginary horizon line in the centre I'm also taking out, out, out my um, brush that has the yellow on it and blending that in and just continue blending that until you're happy. Next we've got Della Blue. Now I must apologise because I think I've got dark blue already in the brush so it is, a, it is looking a little darker than a, the natural colour but that's alright because it wants to be dark at the top of the page so I'm just blending some of that in and I don't want all of the uh, top of the sky to uh, be filled in with this ink. I do want to leave sort of misty cloudy areas um, so something a little like that and we'll go back to it in a little while. Doing a similar thing then to the water because um, bear in mind uh, the sky will reflect into the water and so we're putting some dark patches um, mainly along the edges of the ice uh, 
and leaving some lighter, paler areas uh, towards the right hand side. Again, the blending isn't perfect. It's circular uh, motion strokes with the brush, but we will fix that in due course. Finally, we've got the dark denim and I'm going to just darken up a few of the areas in the sky and uh, I think also add some to the water. As you can see there, just towards the top, a few sort of darker lines towards the centre of the moon and blending that in just to give a bit of variety of uh, different values uh, and tones. Now, as you can see, I'm also deepening up around the edges of the ice um, because that's uh, where the reflections and the deeper uh, parts of the water will be. So just carrying that on um, and it's not perfect, but we will go back to it. So I've taken my uh, pastel and turquoise and extra dark in the, the, uh, the blue and I've taken my applicator and I'm just going to uh, go around the edge of the ice to give it some dimension so it doesn't look flat. And we achieve that by just essentially putting in a line uh, around the edge, something like, a little like that. Also blending it into the ink. Uh, I should say also that the ink uh, in the background is perfectly dry before we start this a pan pastel stage so that the pastels will mix nicely on top of the ink. So doing the same for the distant uh, piece of ice or snow, whatever you want it to be, <laughs> and uh, just blending that into the background. And this is all, this is all quite uh, basic, so don't be afraid of it. You're just putting a dark line at the edge. Now I'm taking my turquoise colour, which I find uh, is a great colour to mix in with water, particularly where there's ice or snow, there's like a turquoise hue to, to the water. If you don't have this colour, don't, don't worry, any sort of paler blue uh, to mix in with the darker blue. And in fact, if you have pastel sticks or pastel pencils, similar colours would do the same job. It's just the, the, the pan. Uh, pastels are, are a bit quicker and easier to mix. So I'm just adding a little uh, bit of white now into the mix and this is where we achieve that misty type look and we also want to uh, lighten the the area, the reflection area below the horizon line because it's not going to be quite as dark as the sky. So as you can see there I'm lightly uh, popping in some uh, white pan pastel and really where the uh, the ink was perhaps a little rough in the mix I'm now um, smoothing that out as if by magic using the, the pan pastels and drawing that up into the sky. The sky is going to be sort of cloudy and misty around the moon so I'm just popping lines here and there and rubbing it in with my finger as you can see. And uh, as usual with pastels and inks, it is a bit of a dance. So once I've done this, um, what I'll do is I'll take uh, my other applicator with the blue colour and the darker shade. And uh, as you can see, I'm doing that now. And what's left on my applicator, I'm blending that in and uh, knocking back the white um, so it doesn't look quite so stark. Also taking a little bit more of the turquoise on my applicator and mixing a little bit of that into um, the background um, where the sun area is. So there we are. Now this is a piece of copy paper. I'm masking off the foreground and I'm taking my nocturne and the first of the tree stamps and I'm going to pop a few of these in above that horizon line. I'm not going to ink up the whole stamp because I want them to be not quite that tall. So this is a good way of uh, cutting the tree off and uh, creating a variety of heights, which is always important. And I'm spacing them out quite um, far apart, as you can see. And this is just a first line of trees. Now, you can use any tree stamp you would like for this uh, part of the project. And indeed, I've taken one of the new stamps, one of the little pine tree stamps. You could use a couple of these if you wanted 
um, and mix them in with the red pine that would look rather nice I just decided to use uh, two just so you get the general idea now I've popped my um, copy paper back in place and now what I'm doing is just taking my small stencil brush and the uh, Versafine Claire in black and I'm creating um, a bank for the trees to nestle into and as you can see I'm just uh, breaking that up a little bit by creating separate little banks towards the right hand side and gradually again with circular motions and my brush I'm um, raising that up and I don't want it to be too stark so as you can see I've blended it in uh, towards the top. Now I'm taking my copy paper and this time I'm raising it about half an inch above that line because what I want to do is pop in the background paler trees off in the distance and they have a little bank of their own and I'm using the Della Blue ink pad for these little trees and as you can see I've lined up or tried to line up my uh, copy paper with the lines on my crafting mat so that I'm trying to keep uh, this uh, line of trees straight which isn't easy to do but it's it's good to line up uh, with the mat as I say. Now I'm going slightly below that to create the little banks and I think I'm using the Della Blue again for that and as you can see the Della Blue is mixed with the yellow in the background and created this sort of green colour which was a bit of a surprise but I'm just going to keep it and fix it later on. Now I'm using a separate stencil brush, again the smaller stencil brush for this and I'm adding the colour gently, it's not as bold as the first line with the black it's just lightly dabbing on the colour and doing faint little banks in the background like that So I'm drying that off because I want to add some pastel and I've taken a grey pastel pencil and I'm just lightly adding that then to the background trees to create like a pine green grey colour and that recedes it back, uh, back into the distance. I'm placing back my copy paper to the first line because I want to then extend the trees along that line and I chose to do it this way to add in the background before I carried on doing the extra trees it was just a bit easier and you can pop more trees in if you wish so there you are now I'm adding some extra details here and I've just put the paper down slightly a tiny two millimeters as you can see just to create a tiny line between uh, the bank and the lake and I'm just taking my dark pastel pencil and this one is a sepia colour but it's actually quite dark and it's almost black so if you had a, a black pastel pencil or a dark brown uh, it would work as well and I'm just popping in some rough um, marks into the lake as a reflection it's not a perfect reflection by any means it's just entirely made up and as you can see I'm also adding little spikes into the banks to create um, some more um, foliage texture and it's just fun adding little uh, lines extending out the reflection and uh, basically making it up as I go along um, I'm not too particular about a perfect reflection because the water of course distorts the shapes so as long as you uh, line up with the trees and do something um, similar um, it sort of works okay because your eye does the rest. Now I'm taking my uh, pastel pencil again in the same grey colour and I'm using that for the, the distant reflections and I think I add a, a final one in the centre there just uh, off camera. There we are. So next I'm taking the, uh, the gum away. That's the masking fluid gum and as you can see we've got a nice bright moon and before I add some details to the moon, I'm using what's left on my blue um, pastel applicator to fill in uh, the circle there around the edge. And really we're starting off with simply what I have left on my applicator and um, gradually deepening it up. Um, I have the idea of, of misty clouds going across the moon and maybe some moon shape something um, a little abstract nothing put too particular 
uh, or realistic, just um, deeper marks here and there, and also uh, a deeper uh, mark across the sky going through the center of the moon looks good. And now what I'm doing is I'm taking my white applicator and my white pastel and I'm mixing it in and blending out the dark blue in a few areas uh, and I'll, in particular underneath the moon where it would be a little more misty and a little paler. So essentially it's strokes uh, across the way um, with your applicator and then deepening some areas again and as usual it's uh, back to the dance of um, blending between the lights and the darks. So this part's fun, I'm just taking my white gel pen and I'm adding lines across the, the page and this part really brings the light to life and it's amazing by just adding a few little strokes of white here and there um, what that does then to the reflection, particularly when you start uh, creating the little white lines across the trees, which I'm about to start doing. There we are. And these little strokes uh, create the impression of reflection on the water and, as I say, really bring the lake to life. It's quite a still lake um, and it's not, it's not difficult to do. As I say, it's little lines just across the trees and along the edges of the banks. And you get something a little, a little like that. Extend it on down as well to the water in the foreground. And if you want to blend parts of it out, you can do that with the pan pastel, as I'm doing. And blend it out with your finger until you're um, happy with how it looks. So next we're going to remove the gum of the ice um, patches and they're nice and crisp and white and now I'm going to uh, muck them up <laughs> by using pan pastels again going to the dark blue and uh, adding in just little areas of texture and shadow um, not too much and as you'll see we're going to blend it the, the the dark blue out with the paler colors and this is the the uh, blue in the same family the ultramarine marine uh, tint color there we are uh, and uh, it helps then uh, cool the the dark blue down and then a little bit of white as well to blend it in carefully and just do that to all three patches uh, until you're happy now I'm taking my nocturne and I've got the beautiful wolves and I'm going to put them in place and it's nice to have room for both uh, of the wolves in this picture. Um, you could of course do a smaller version of this and not be quite so large a composition but it's nice to have them both howling at the moon in this icy, icy landscape. Now I'm taking the same colour blue and adding a little extra shadow now that the, the wolves have been stamped in place and blending that out. I uh, don't want it to be too strong and uh, just a hint of a shadow underneath uh, both of them. Something a little, a little like that. And taking what's left on my applicator I'm starting to add some highlights on on the images as well uh, just very lightly to start to begin with and once I've got a feel for where I want the paler areas I'm deepening that down as you can see and then once I have uh, some of the face and the front of, of the chest area and the top of the back added in I'm just slightly dabbing that and then blending it again with with the applicator until I'm happy with the blend and this is uh, all to um, add a little bit of dimension. Now I've taken the the grey pastel pencil again and it's not um, coming out grey but it, I, I, what I did notice it did was it added some nice texture by taking away the pastel so I just left that the way it was and uh, then took my darker pastel pencil to further enhance the texture and I suppose this is what it's all about, adding dimension and the impression of fur on the wolves and uh, concentrating on 
the area under the chin as being the dark area and underneath the legs, etc. So there we are. I've also added a touch of white and carried on blending some, some white pastel on the backs of the uh, wolves. And I also added in some stars lightly around the moon with my white gel pen. Did that off camera and uh, just fixed a few wee bits and pieces here and there. And that's the project complete and I popped it onto black and white car just to frame it. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, project and it's given you some ideas for your own work. Uh, take very good care of yourselves until next time. But above all, get creating, be brave and enjoy the adventure. <laughs>